let's say we have a parabola and so it's the curve y equals x squared we're just interested in this line and we're going to cut it off at y equals 4 so x is from negative 2 to 2 these are our endpoints goes from here around to here and we're asked to find the centroid of this object to do this we're going to start by finding x bar because we can find that via a symmetry argument without having to do any integration then to find y bar we're going to have to do a lot of work we're going to parameterize the curve we're going to set up the integral and we're going to solve well for our symmetry argument x bar is oh i forgot to give you the density let density be constant let density be constant. Okay, now we can make our symmetry argument. Uh, this so side, the weight on this side perfectly balances the weight on this side. This little bit, bit here balances this little bit here. So our line of symmetry is this y-axis, and x-bar is going to be equal to zero. Um, let's note that y bar is probably, I don't know, it's going to be somewhere in here maybe. Not sure exactly where it's going to be, but it seems like there's a little more mass lower down. Note, y bar is not on the wire. There's no point on the wire where we could put a finger and expect the wire to balance without kind of falling and hanging from it um, in a flat plane. Uh, so, the center of mass doesn't have to be in the object, it can be someplace else. To parameterize, we want to create a family of vectors, r of t, so that the points, x of t, comma, y of t, are the same as the points that are on our curve. And um, the easiest way to do this when we're given an equation to start with is just let x of t equal t. So y of t equals x squared equals t squared and negative 2 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 2 so our parameterization is that r of t is equal to t i plus t squared j for this set of t. That's, that's our finished parameterization. To find y bar, we need to take the integral over our curve of y times the density with little pieces dr, little pieces of the curve, and we need to divide by the total mass. Finding the total mass actually requires say, taking a second integral. We take the density at a particular point, we multiply it by the length of the curve at that spot, that gives us a little piece of mass in a particular spot, and we have to add all of those up using this integral to get the total mass. So we're not going to be able to find y bar until we've done the integral to find the total mass and also done this other integral with this strange function inside of y delta. In order to set up this integral, we're, uh, we need to describe our curve C. Okay, we created a parameterization to do that. And we need to find what the little increments of the curve are, the little length pieces that we're going to walk as we walk along the curve to take our integral. We're going to recall our parameterization. t comma t squared is a point on our parabola with negative 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 describing all of the points that we want to include in our shape. Okay, uh, we need to differentiate to figure out how far we move in a little bit of time um, dt. So let's see, dr dt equals dx dt i plus dy dt j equals 1 i plus 2 t j. This 1 came from taking the derivative of t, and this 2 t came from taking the derivative of t squared, because this was the function describing our x-coordinate as a function of time, and this is our y-coordinate as a function of time. And um, we care about the distance that we move uh, over a chunk of time, uh, dt, and so we need to take the length of this vector. So we just we need to compute this square root thing times dt, 
and that gives us the distance that uh, we move along our curve in time dt. We plug in dx dt, which was 1, and dy dt, which was 2t, two, two and we find this expression. We get the square root of 1 plus 4t squared dt, and that's the distance that we move along this curve when we move for time increment dt. Now it's time to set up our integral. We're starting at time negative 2, we're going to time 2, we're integrating y times our constant density, we'll call it k, of little pieces of our curve, and the length of those pieces is 1 plus 4 t squared dt. Okay, um, we're integrating dt, but we've got this y hanging out. What's y actually? Well, it's our y-coordinate at any moment in time, so it's actually t squared, since that's what our y-coordinate was as we moved along, as we moved along our curve. So, y bar is equal to the integral from the beginning, uh, from the time that we're at the beginning of the curve to the time that we're at the end of the curve. The y-coordinate of the curve times our density times this length of a curve piece all divided by the mass, and the mass is an integral from our starting time on the curve to our ending time on the curve of our density times the length, length of the pieces that we encounter as we move in chunks dt. And so what's left is to evaluate these sort of unpleasant looking integrals. How to do that is going to require a little bit of thought. After checking out what we get on Wolfram Alpha, which is some um, hyperbolic, like, tr trigonometric, like, cinch functions, um, I realized that we have to work with some kind of unpleasant hyperbolas, and uh, yuck, these integrals are gross, and we're just going to stop here and say that setting up this problem was um, a really great exercise in trying to understand how to parameterize a curve and then um, how to set up the um, finding the center of mass.